Hello there Cancers! So thank you so much for uh, watching my videos and I hope that you find this reading resonates with you and I hope that it is uh, helpful as we navigate the energies for the month of October. So uh, when I was shuffling out the spread for this month um, I saw a an image and uh, for those of you who might be you know into movies um, the scene that I'm seeing is very similar to this movie called The Orphanage I believe um, it's a foreign film. It's in Spanish and um, it's a really good movie, by the way, if you haven't gotten a chance to see it. It's called The Orphanage, okay? Um, a little bit scary. So if you're not into, you know, horror movies or ghost movies, don't watch it. But it's a, I, I feel like it's a great movie overall. So there's a scene in the movie where the little boy, he found a friend in the cave. So he went to this uh, beach, saw a cave, went into the cave, found a little boy. And then his parents told him, oh, it's time to go. And what he has is he has like a bucket of seashells. So along the way home, he uh, leaves like a trail of seashells so that his friend can find uh, his way home, can, can find him at home. Um, so that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a little boy on the beach. He's by himself. He looks really young, um, four, five, maybe not four, like maybe five or six where he's a little bit more aware and he's at the beach by himself and he wants to be found okay so he's he's there looking around there isn't anybody around and I feel like you know he's familiar with the beach so it seems like he knows how to get back home uh, but he has this bucket of seashells and he's leaving a trail just in case somebody wants to find him okay so right off the bat the, uh, I'm, I'm seeing somebody who's um, you know like uh, children when they run away from home and then uh, they get a little bit scared and then they look back and they're just like is this the right thing to do is this the best course of action um, are they gonna miss me how are they going to re react when they find out that I'm no longer there or you know how am I going how are they going to um, find me so if they're if I leave and they want to find me and they want to apologize and they want to make it up to me how will I know so just in case I'm going to leave this trail so that they can find me okay so that's what it feels like um, for some of you guys this is you where you're leaving dropping hints okay and um cancers are very very shy people at heart i feel like you have a very indirect way of going after the things that you want you also have a very indirect way of um communicating what you want you're like the master of the art of subtlety and a lot of the times what you don't realize is that you're allow to you know verbalize and speak up for the things that you want or the things that you don't want you're allowed to voice your opinion you're allowed to you know state your your peace okay and i feel like a lot of um i guess miscommunications between you and other people um stems from the fact that you're not overly I guess expressive of your needs okay you you don't put your needs first and I almost feel like there's a sense within you where you feel like your needs your opinions your thoughts don't really matter and so you kind of keep it in and you don't express what it is that you want and it, it leads to a situation where you feel a little bit like other people don't care but how will other people know unless you voice yourself okay so I feel like for many of you this child that's um, running away from home that's leaving a trail so that he can be found this child could be you where you 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 feel almost like there is a situation back home that seems a little bit um, I want to say stuck it seems a little bit like turbulent and it seems like it can't go back it can't be gone back to and fixed and as a result of it you have opted to leave okay but every single time you make a decision I feel like you're not 100% sure okay so emotionally you're just like I, I don't want to stay in this anymore and so physically you opt out or you walk out but then there's always the nagging sense 
within you like what if you know tomorrow my emotions change and i want to go back what if you know a week from now my emotions you know subside and i feel like okay i can go back and 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 give it another go and so the constant fear that i feel a lot of cancerian people have is that your emotions are constantly changing with the tides the way that you feel one day is not the way that you feel the next day and because of that I feel like this constant changes in your emotional state scares you as well okay you don't know what's permanent you don't know what you want long term you don't know if how you feel about this situation is going to be the same about how you feel about it the next day and so the emotional ebb and flow scares you and I feel there's a lot of uncertainty here because you're making a decision. Emotionally, it feels really right, okay? But physically, it feels uncomfortable. And what I mean by that is um, the closest, you know, uh, analogy that I can uh, get to that is a lot of the times, right, we, um, we have a feeling, for example, that we're no longer in love with somebody, right? We, we know for a fact emotionally that we're no longer in love with them. And, and then they do something really nice and really sweet and it draws us back in and everything is great. And for that day, for that moment, everything feels really right. And so you feel like, oh, okay, I can fall back in love with this person. And then the next day they would do something to upset you or to you know isolate you or to like lash out and and then you're just like okay um my feelings are gone and so through the motions through the the journey through the course of events even like within the same day there's magnificent like just tremendous ebb and flow and just um turbulence when it comes to your emotional state so i'm inclined to say that you're not really sure emotionally what you want I feel like rationally you know what's good for you okay uh, the ace of swords is all about mental processes it's about communication it's about how we arrive at a solution or how we arrive at a decision so in the emotional realm everything is very clear-cut okay things are very concise there is a right and there's a wrong there is um, I feel like there's a situation where things are very black and white, okay? Things are very black and white here. We have the high priestess, the white pillar and the black pillar. And I feel like there is definitely a, a right and wrong. So if you detach your emotion from this situation, there's definitely somebody who's in the right and there's definitely somebody who's in the wrong. However, we could be tainted or influence or bias by our emotional state and the person who is in the right could be viewed as the person who's in the wrong because we might have some you know emotional hang-ups about that person and so I feel like there's a situation here where you need to really emotionally detach from it either spiritually physically emotionally and it might be you know all three take a step away from it completely in order for you to really come to terms with what it is that is the best course of action between you and this situation or how you can um, you know whether or not to clearly and cleanly extract yourself from a situation because I feel like you're stuck in this uh, holding pattern this holding cell okay and rationally, it makes a lot of sense, right? All those swords, okay? All of those thoughts, all of those ideas, all of those things that have been decided. But I feel like rationally, you've already made up your mind, but emotionally as well, your, your emotions have not really caught up with the decision that you made. And so you find yourself in this holding pattern wondering what ifs okay like wondering about the what ifs and wondering like can this be fixed can this be be gone back to i mean we're already at the eight of swords the inevitable is the nine of swords and then the ten of swords which is the end of a cycle and so i feel like there's a situation here that has been very very tenuous 
and it's really hard for you to decide when to throw in the towel and decide when to extract your soul. This is also a situation where things are very barren, okay? The ground is barren, nothing's grown on it. The landscape is barren, it's a desert area. The vegetation, life, and just, you know, um, these are vultures, right? Waiting for a situation to end so then they can, you know, um, descend upon this situation and feast, okay? So it's not looking really pretty, does it? Um, so what I'm seeing here is there is a situation, a, a possible cycle that is coming to an end and I feel like you're still in the midst of it and you might not know how to extract yourself from the situation or you might not see that. You, you might not be rationally, mentally, you're seeing this picture, right? And emotionally, you haven't come to terms with the fact that it's the Eight of Swords, the next is the Nine of Swords, which is like nightmares. And the last of the cycle is the Ten of Swords, which is, you know, too much has been said, too much has been done. We cannot go back to it because we are thoroughly hurt. And so I feel like there's a situation here where your spiritual advice is about smartening up seeing it for what it is, detaching your emotions from this situation to really look at it in an objective way and, you know, be decisive about what you're deciding to do so that you don't, I want to say, spend more time in this holding cell waiting for things to get better when in fact the environment is you know, is barren, okay? It's like the apocalypse. Um, there, there's no vegetation here. Nothing can grow here. Nothing can be uh, planted and nourished and fostered. And I feel like you are aware of this on a mental level, but emotionally you're not there. Going back to the image that I saw earlier, you know, somebody is like dropping hints along the way, okay? And I feel almost like this could be a physical person who has, you know, made an escape away from home and they're like, will they find me? Will the other person put in the effort to reach out to me? If they reach out to me and I'm, you, you know, just um, uh, without my cell phone, how will I know that they are trying to communicate with me? How will I know that they are trying to contact me? And so I feel like in a physical way, somebody could be wanting that validation from you uh, you could be wanting it from another person. Um, and I feel like somebody is dropping hints along the way so that the other person, hoping and praying that the other person will be along the way or walking in the same route or running across, you know, that person. So I, I definitely feel here there's a sense of like last ditch attempt. Okay. It's like, it, it, it seems to me like something's very final and you're just hoping for some type of a last ditch attempt to salvage a situation or for a situation to turn completely around because you don't know what else to do, okay? Um, I'm also seeing for many of you, and this is a more of a spiritual message, okay? You are getting signs, objects being moved around in your environment, you are getting signals and, you know, repeating numbers, repeating patterns, showing you the way out of a situation. And I'm sensing that you're heeding the signs. And I feel like you, some of you might be ignoring the signs because emotionally you want a different outcome. Does that make sense? And so it is really important to ask for signs, ask for validation, because I feel like you're getting a lot of uh, spiritual energy around you, um, trying to communicate with you, okay? Not in a spooky way, because I feel like you have been praying for some type of a signal. You have been wanting some type of clarity. And I feel like, you know, your, your guides around you are definitely delivering the signs. And signs are very, very, signs can be very subtle, but I feel like for you guys in this case, subtlety is not the way that they want to approach this. So your spirit guides are going to be 
very clear about the messages that they want to deliver to you and the signs are going to be quite obvious okay so look for patterns look look for like objects leading towards a certain path look especially at objects strewn about in a uh, path that you're trying to take okay and i feel like there's a situation here that you're not getting clarity on because of your emotional state or because you're emotionally invested in a specific outcome and as a result of it you might be seeing the signs you might be seeing you know all the synchronicities but you're not really um accepting that's that's where things are headed does that make sense so what I'm also feeling as well is uh, there's a lot of communication when it comes to family, when it comes to old friends, when it comes to reunions and people coming, you know, coming in for you. Okay, so we have a lot of celebrations with the four of wands. This is a very good card. We have as well family energy with the judgment card. This is a the, the day of reckoning, things being brought to light and people coming together, okay? I usually see this card as like rescue, okay? Like that SOS a distress signal has been sent out. Somebody coming in to kind of like alleviate the situation. So I feel like, you know, if you have been wondering and if you have been kind of like sending out the distress signals, I need help. I need some guidance, I need some advice, I need some counsel, I need like clarity, whatever it is that has um, ha had you very, very muddled and wound up in a situation, okay? You're going to be getting some messages and, and reprieve and help and assistance and, you know, the person coming into the picture in order to slash through the fog and slash through the confusion and to provide you with a set of tools so that you can free yourself and you can move on okay so i definitely feel like it's coming in it's very swift and it's going to be very final um, i'm seeing here there is an um a, a, a wrapping up or a finality of a situation and it looks really wonderful it looks to me like it could be family it could be like um, reconciliation with family members that have been estranged for a really long time and it's coming about very swiftly. I'm also seeing some medical breakthroughs for many of you. I'm also seeing like successfully signing um, some type of documents that have been, you know, you've been kept in the dark and now things are coming to light and there's like signature is what I'm sensing, okay? Like leaving a paper trail, okay? So signatures, finalizing documents, perusing documents and things like that. And so the ener so that's what's coming through with the first six cards here. What I do feel as well, in the middle of the spread, we have here the Queen of Wands and the High Priestess, okay? So this indicates to me night and day okay the daytime and the nighttime and i'm drawn to the black and white here with the pillars i'm also drawn to the black and white with the doves okay the black doves coming down and the white doves freeing themselves so there's a lot here to be said about you know dichotomy about opposites okay about two people who are like different like night and day and so the message that I'm getting here is um, I feel like there is a situation here where you might not be getting through to another person or the other person might not be getting through to you. And even if, and cancers, you give people a lot of slack and you give people a lot of leeway. You, you do, you're very, very understanding and unimposing of other people. You're not, you know, the, the sign that wants people to change. You accept people for the way that they are, okay? And I feel like there might have been a situation where two people are just, you know, um, it's like uh, opposites attract, okay? But then opposites also repel, right? And when we're not very, I guess like compatible with another person it can create a situation where they're seeing things through their own worldview and you're seeing through things through yours and there's very little commonality 
to allow the two of you to see eye to eye. There's very little commonality to allow the, the two of you to kind of like agree on things on a fundamental level. You know, where should we leave the table? Where should we leave the couch? Um, do we leave the toilet seat up or down? Like all these little things, these jarring, you know, everyday things become difficult. Planning for the future becomes difficult. Um, planning a trip, planning a vacation, planning a life together, um, navigating each other's uh, energies when you're sharing space, when you're sharing a home, when you're sharing a bedroom, when you're sharing, you know, just common space, common office space too. I feel like it's just, um, it's a little bit difficult. Some of you are dealing with someone who's very, very caring, very loving, and very generous, okay? This is a card about generosity here. We have this fairy godmother or this uh, grandmother who loves very unconditionally, okay? This is someone who's like, uh, when you've had a bad day, they will come in and they will soothe away all your trouble. They will cook for you, they will clean for you, they will nourish you, and cancers love to be fed and love to be nourished, okay? So for cross watchers, just a hint. Um, I feel like you, you've got somebody who's, um, who's, who is a very amazing character, okay? On their best days. They're very loving, very nurturing, and just, you know, phenomenal. And then on their bad days, um, they could be prone to mood swings, okay? They, they get upset very easily. It's the Queen of Wands, so this is fire energy. And it's somebody who's like very proud, very proud. Um, they don't like to be lied to. They don't like to be um, passed over. Um, in a way, they, they command attention and they want to be, you know, the apple of your eye. Because I'm drawn to the fruits. They don't want to be passed over. They want to be the one and only. And if they're not the one and only, then they would rather not deal with this situation. And then on the other hand, you have somebody who's very wise, who's very like, uh, who's, this is someone who's very hands-on, okay? So like she's touching the, the girl, consoling her because she knows the girl is sad. This is somebody who loves in a very detached manner. They're wise beyond their years. Look at the owl. They might not be great around children. They're very detached. They have an air about them that is very distant and very cold and possibly very aloof. Um, I'm getting that you might be dealing with somebody like this. And from your perspective, you're just like, this is a person who thinks they know everything, like a know-it-all. But I feel like there's some truth and there's some wisdom to the things that they do know, okay? There, there's like some truth to what they know. There, there are truths to what they are saying. And so this is somebody that deserves to be revered. Their advice deserves to be followed. And so I'm hearing like heed the advice, um, be cool and collected, okay? And especially like heeding that intuition, listening to your inner voice and really listen. And if you're asking the question, you know, is it going to get better? I feel like you might already know the answer to it, that we're in the Eight of Swords, and I feel like something is closing out its cycle. And so this is the advice to emotionally detach yourself so that you can uh, um, come to this space of higher wisdom and to be able to understand what you need to do. So really respect that higher wisdom really respect the signs that you've been getting if you acknowledge one sign okay if you're asking for a sign and it comes to you in the physical realm and if you trust it and you can ask like can you give me another sign it'll come to you but you need to trust it and you you need to respect that the signs are coming in and you have to trust it all right. So what I'm seeing here is a situation where emotional detachment is going to do wonders. And I feel like it's, it's the right thing to do. Uh, what I'm feeling here is the energy of two people who are like very, very uh, different, very night and day. 
you have somebody who's a goal getter who is um, possibly a little bit more you know vi well very type a but a little bit more emotionally volatile and then we have a situation where the other person is very cool and calm and collected like a placid lake okay like it's just still on the surface there it's just still water and underneath they're very very detached and I feel like I feel like for some of you this could be you know one of you I, I I'm sensing that this could be you and this could be like a significant other that you are dealing with or another person that you're dealing with if it's like a family situation that you're not able to get um, get through to the other person the other person is very proud um, when you're dealing with someone like this the best thing that you have to do is kind of like stroke their ego if you're trying to get them to see your point of view you have to acknowledge their point of view first even if you don't agree with it because what they prefer and what they really crave is to be validated don't we all right but i feel like with this person the best approach is okay i see what you're saying but here's what i'm proposing and so that will let them know that you were listening to them that will also let them know that you have thought about what they've said to validate what they've said to kind of like um verbalize and reiterate that you understand you know where they're coming from and so rather than shutting them down right off the bat because i feel like this person's got a lot of pride okay and that love that attention that they 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 um um lather upon people when they love that person i feel like it can be turned and, and then they can grow very, very distant when their pride has been pricked, okay? So I feel like there is a situation here where two people are really no longer sharing the same sky, no longer sharing the same household, no longer sharing the same dreams and aspiration. I'm seeing distance, a lot of like emotional distance as well as like geographical distance separating the two people one person wants to come back and make amends okay this is a card about sailing away from troubled water wanting to smooth things out wanting to be the peacekeeper and i feel for many of you this might be your energy because you're very good at this you're very conflict avoidant you're very um you're very much like you know the the peacemaker and i feel that there are there are so many more things that you want to say you want to you know voice your opinion you want to like i feel like even when you're upset you remain very calm or you retreat you don't succumb to verbal diarrhea you don't succumb to you know explosive intense emotional expressions because I feel like your emotional state rarely gets to that point where you boil over. And so you might have been playing the peacemaker for a very, very long time. And then I also feel like, you know, you're, you're thinking about giving it another try. You're thinking about uh, going back into the situation. I feel like the other person is yearning for something new and they're yearning for you know a new experience they're looking at other options that might be out there they're possibly thinking about travel they're possibly thinking about you know a, a land far away so there's a situation here and this is a, a card greatly about you know uh, nostalgia longing for something yearning for something missing another person and as well thinking about the life that we could have had or a life that we used to have thinking about a situation how it should have unfolded versus the reality of how it unfolded thinking about a situation and looking at it as if it has a lot of potential and then feeling a little bit stuck so we have here the two of wands and then the two of swords indecisiveness i feel like there's somebody in your midst who is waiting for contact, waiting for you to be the initiator, waiting for some type of, um, what I'm getting here is just this really intense longing, intense, okay? It's like, 
why isn't that person making a move? Why isn't that person communicating? Why is that person closed off? And why are they turning their back? What are they waiting on? What is like what is coming in for them what is happening to them so there might be geographical distance separating you and a situation or a person and you're wondering what's happening over there you're wondering if you're missing out on anything you're wondering if they're going to reach out you're wondering if they're going to you know let down those swords and kind of like bring you into the fold okay and you're wondering on the course of action that you need to take I'm feeling here there is a very strong soul connection that we have with one another and we have here the two of cups one person is very much sure that this is a solid relationship this is a soulmate connection this is the person that I'm meant to be with one person is very 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 sure of this and one person is willing to put in the work in order to make it a reality then I'm also sensing the other person is looking for signs and validation. They're looking for that openness and that expression from you so that they know you're coming in for them. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm sensing here this Two of Cups energy is very much under the current, okay? It's like, it's like very subtle. There isn't any talking, there isn't any communication but you feel this pull towards one another. And I feel like, you know, if it's an existing relationship, even in the worst of it or in the thick of it, the two of you still very much, you know, you care about one another and you want the other person to do well. So there's a situation here where I feel like one person wants to explore uh, other territories and the other person wants to go back and fix it and depending on what side of the coin you're in um i am guided to you know flip up the last card underneath the deck and what we have here is the eight of cups and this is a situation we have uh, invested a lot of time a lot of resources a lot of emotional resources financial resources in and we feel this sense of visceral visceral pain it's like you know getting punched in the gut where you're just like, okay, wake up from this, and, and, and this is a situation I don't want to ex experience anymore. And then I'm also feeling like there's a lot of uh, regrets with this card, where when you think about the other person, not only are you thinking about what transpired between you and the other person, you're also thinking about how much I'm getting how much the other person how much pain the other person is in so I'm feeling a very strong psychic and even like a very strong empathic link between you and, and another person where you feel what they feel and you don't want them to experience the pain and so you might be kind of like I'm sensing a mesh with the other person to the point where you take on the responsibilities to take care of them and you know we we all need to go through and learn our life's lesson and i feel like you're subsidizing it you're helping them through it because you don't want to them to experience certain things when it's their destiny it, it's it's their soul's purpose or or it will greatly it, it's almost like their soul needs to grow through all this these hardships in order to be the best person that they can be but along the way you might have steer them away from these obstacles or these hardships or these situations because you didn't want them to experience it and now you're starting to realize that what you're doing might have been detrimental okay you did it out of love you did it out of you know kindness and wanting uh, not wanting the other person to experience these things but I feel like there is a sense of things backfiring where it is important to really emotionally detach from a situation, okay? There is definitely a really strong soul connection here. I feel like for some of you, um, there is a lack of communication, a blockage in communication. I'm seeing both parties leaving little breadcrumbs so that they can be found, leaving little hints here and there, leaving a, a paper trail so that they can be traced, so that the other person can find them if need be. I'm feeling that it's very subtle and I'm feeling like 
both parties want to be found both parties want to come back together and I'm feeling as well you're looking at somebody who is you feel might be a soulmate connection they're potentially very far away and you're wondering if they are in another connection if they're in another relationship I would advise you to reach out because I feel like this situation is like you know how you haven't seen like a really uh, someone in like five or ten years and you can still pick up where you left off this is what it feels like so I feel like if you're wondering about that person um, communication needs to be initiated from your end okay and then I'm also seeing as well uh, a situation where somebody is doing something um, in the midst of like um, anger and uh, I feel like they're angry but they're also hurt okay so it's like a mixture of like uh, I'm upset with you but I'm also hurt by your actions and then as a result of it they do something a little bit drastic something unexpected okay something very swift unexpected but it's coming from a space where they're just like angry and hurt and just you know um, a, a mixture of emotions that they're a little bit confused about too and so I feel like something was done out of character something that you didn't think would happen um, something that you wouldn't think they would say or something that they would wouldn't do and then I feel like it's leaving a lot of regrets and, and you want to fix the situation you want to make it better and I feel like you know give it some time they're going to cool off and they're going to come back okay so there's a sense of like homecoming people coming back into the picture what um, the the breadcrumbs or the paper trail that was left behind will be found and the other person will be uh, chased or will be coming back into the fold okay um, I would say be a little bit patient if you're dealing with things from this end okay uh, communication needs to be initiated from your end and then I feel like there's a situation here where you're trying to break free and for some of you I'm feeling that you want to break free from restrictions and I don't see like third parties at all okay I just feel like responsibilities um, things piling up on you and you just want to like it, it feels like you you wish all your responsibilities were like a coat you can cast it off and just go and you know have fun but there's a lot of responsibilities here and you feel a little bit tied down and a little bit stuck there's a lot of success as well and I feel like you know you understand that working diligently that success comes with a lot of hard work and you're thankful for it but some days the the responsibilities that are bearing upon you can feel a little bit overwhelming okay so that's what I'm seeing here I do hope the reading has been helpful for you guys and I hope that you can you know apply this as we uh, get into the month of October um, for those who are interested in a reading I'm no longer doing private readings but I do have a colleague her name is Bridget she is a phenomenal psychic she's based out of California if you're interested in booking a reading for yourself or for people that you know um, I highly recommend that you um, book a reading through her. I've included a link in the description box below for her uh, scheduling website, okay? So I um, hope you have the best September, the rest of September. And I hope this energy will be helpful for you as we navigate towards um, the month of uh, October, all right? Uh, take care of yourself, Cancers. I will be back uh, for the monthly reading next month, okay? And I wish you the best. Bye-bye.